I set this up really early and it's just been fatigue cycling away. So there's, uh, this glass is really tough and really durable and we have another, a few tests that we use to ensure that there's no failures or problems with this glass. So the sharp, the sharp material actually abrades the paint, the paint, the windows, the camera windows, anything like that. So. Sure. And so this is just a wide variety, and it, if you think about it, like bone gets subjected to all these different things. If you eat your French fries, this uh, this this actually does put, cause quite a bit of problems to different kinds of plastics. It's fiscal oil, so like French fry grease you'll have on your hands. You go to the beach, you get your copper tone on your hands. So it, it does tend to to cause problems. So we 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 address that uh, through applying the chemicals onto the phones, and then typically we actually actually. Put on. the way we do to research stuff you'll see the drop and tumble testers downstairs once we if we do have a problem that's like kind of an isolated problem maybe a, a, a specific corner is giving us trouble this is the the machine we use to uh, really analyze it because I can do repetitive hits exactly in one location so I can show you this this is going a little higher this is going a two meter hit Watch out there, it's a little bit this way. So it's two meter hit, this is a little higher than, than what we typically test to. But it comes down and gives this thing a good shot. Chucks it in. Goal. Yeah, go. <laughs> exactly. And you know, like, sometimes they do come apart, but we're not overly worried about that because, you know, people can put their phones back together. And then we'll see what happens. So she still fires up, except, so there you go, still good. Until, until right. uh, February, and he wants to live in San Jose. What, what, I guess it's water, a little cool. Our most expensive equipment, the dripping water tester. So we put the phones through this test and we observe what happens to the phone. And uh, one of the things that we do here is um, we use a water sensitive spray such as this and um, we, we put the spray on certain parts of the phone like the internals of the phone and we put it through this dripping water for a test and then with that we can find out where the where the liquid where the water gets what we do here. Um, we actually have ha um, high-speed cameras that record the drops and I have one set up over here. I don't have time to show you how it works but I have one already that's been done before. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the uh, show CSI. Well this lab is kind of like that. It's kind of the CSI of Nokia. So uh, um, but the, the CSI you know what they're looking for is to try to solve criminal cases where we're trying to solve phone failures. So um, not every failure within Nokia requires this level of analysis. Uh, for example, let's say um, you just saw the drop testing, right? Let's say you're doing drop testing and you, you drop the phone and the display stops working afterwards. But there's a big crack in the display. So that's, that's a pretty obvious failure mode. The display breaks because it's cracked. It doesn't require this level of analysis. But let's use that same example where you take and you drop the phone, display doesn't work, but there's no physical damage to the phone. There's no cracks, dents, cut, uh, breaks, anything at all. 
So that's where this equipment comes in, because this equipment allows us to see things that you can't see with the naked eye inside the phone without having to disassemble the phone. And what you see here is you see a head, you know, a headset plug plugged into a headset jack similar to what I showed over there. And then we can zoom in, you know, quite close and see each of the contacts, whether they're, whether they're connected or not. And, and we do not have to disassemble the phone, which is really, really helpful because a lot of times if you dis disassemble the phone while you're doing an analysis, you'll lo lose the evidence and then you won't have it anymore. You can see how the spring is connecting here and here and here. So that's one of the ways that we use 2D.